All right, uh, I think it's the 30th of September 2019. You know, I posted that video yesterday, or a couple days ago, about uh, making America great again. You know, literally, I was at a pool tournament the other day when my friend showed me on, the, on his cell phone where they passed laws that people could walk around naked. And, and I, could, I look at it this way. I could, I could imagine this type of thing. I could I could literally imagine that that how that's how society could be. Uh, I know that I told uh, the woman that I'm staying with, and she looked it up and she couldn't find it. She said it was false, but I could see this type of thing happening because if I recall, uh, Colorado was one of the states, and. Uh, the other video I made that I haven't posted up, and I probably am not going to post it up because I was pretty, I was pretty irate in this message. Uh, you know, when they literally, when there's three drugs, when there's three drugs here in America that a person could make or buy, and people could actually use, and it's not fully illegal. By the, uh, by the, what do you call it, the, the, the part of the government that makes drugs legal or illegal, uh, and you can actually buy the, buy these drugs if you're in certain states, uh, it, it's mesmerizing that, that people are worried about smoking marijuana and whether they should make it legal or not when there's drugs out here that people have actually died from that people can still buy. <laughs> I mean, that's how that's how wicked this nation is. I mean, literally, I sit here and saw three drugs, three drugs that you could buy here in America that at least one of the drugs, 44 people have died. And the reason why people have taken this drug is because of opiate, uh, opiate addiction. And... Uh, I saw you could buy it in California, you could buy it in Oregon, Washington, all these wicked states, all these wicked states, and and then they legalize marijuana for medicinal purposes here in Oklahoma. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind that if it's for medicinal purposes, that's one thing, but when they're giving anybody a license to, to not only buy, to grow, and to sell... Uh, just like they're doing in these states where they've legalized it, then then there's something wrong with society. There's something wrong with society uh, that I could go in there and act hurt and I could get a, a, a medicinal marijuana card because I know of many of people that have already got one here in Oklahoma that never needed one, not for medicinal purposes. They're not they're not hurt. I heard that they're getting ready to change the way of the cards where you have to, every three months, you have to go get another card. But, either way, this is a wicked nation. I'm telling you, I could see them legalizing where people could walk around naked. I literally could. I mean, I literally could. He, My friend literally showed me that. But that's, that's here and there. Like I said... This is a wicked nation. I mean, when it falls, it falls. You know, I've been mad before. I've been mad because, literally, when I sit here and see how people are today, people that I've been friends with all my life, and how they act to me today, I could just imagine everybody else out here putting on a show. When you go places, people act friendly. And then, and then you can see in your own church where, you, where people don't dislike other people. This, this world is gone. It's, it's out of control. But, uh, yeah. All I know is that I've witnessed so many things, and it's so strange. I sit here and told my friend the other day how I believed the Antichrist was going to be revealed. No joke. Less than 10 minutes later, I found where it was in prophecy the same way that I've sit here and talked. Just, I told my friend how I believed the Antichrist was going to be revealed, and bam, all of a sudden, there it was, what I sit here and told my friend.
So, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, people. I still don't see how Watchmen, their, most, most of their messages is all about being raptured, about not witnessing anything, being pulled out of here and not witnessing anything. And I just don't see it. I don't see it. When people have sit here and said that they've had messages from, from God for years, for years, for years. So just because somebody had a vision or a dream last year and people have had some 15 years ago doesn't mean anybody was going to get raptured out of here before things started falling apart. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand why everybody thinks, like I said, why I used to say, people used to always refer to the Antichrist being revealed and the apostasy happening. And the apostasy is already happening. The, the, the Antichrist will be, will be revealed. And eventually when the Antichrist is going to be revealed, does that mean the next day the rapture is going to happen? Or does that mean simultaneously? Or does that mean that anybody... I mean, that, that it's not a, a year later. A year later. I mean, look at all the people that boasted about the Revelation 12 sign and we're still here. Everybody put the, the rapture with the Revelation 12 sign and we're still here. So, for me to sit here and think that people, I mean, literally, are not even... Why even why did anybody even ever talk about the apostasy of the, or the... Uh, the Antichrist being revealed that would happen before the rapture. And look, we're still here. I just wonder how many heartbroken people are going to be out here worried so much about a rapture thinking that they literally have to be watching. No, you may want to make sure that you're worthy of standing in front of the Son of Man. Isn't it weird? We need to be worthy, but everybody feels like that they're worthy. Only those living for God are the ones that are worthy of anything. The ones obedient to God. You know, I saw uh, a message yesterday. I, I googled something, and it talked about... Uh, what was it that I googled? It had something to do with... Uh, once saved and uh, it's strange that this thing said it talked about being obedient but yet for some reason the people that talk about once saved never talk about obedience never talk about obedience like they're owed something and the only way you're owed something is if you're being obedient to God then God does owe you something but if you're not going to be obedient to God I don't know how any it talked about an obedient heart because it's the heart that has to change. It's the heart that has to change. That I mean, I know that uh, I know that uh, it refers to uh, a change of mind. But I still love how that person posted up one day. It was a change of mind leading to a change of heart. But I don't see everybody's heart changed. I don't. I see more hypocrites than I see people living for God. I see more hypocrites. I know where I've been, but I admitted a long time ago I never wanted to be a hypocrite. But I know where I've been. if anybody caught on to something I did a minute ago. Bang. Well, yeah, this world is gone, and I don't understand how everybody thinks that they're worthy of being right with God. Isn't it strange? I'm still, I, I think it's still strange that I went to a Christian church as a child, and I really never learned anything about God, because, you know, when you're young, you don't really learn a whole bunch. You just learn about God. You don't learn how to, uh, how to, I mean, at the, at the age I'm talking about, at the time, the age, I really didn't absorb a whole bunch. And I went to, I went to a Christian school, and I never heard, out of all that time, all the things that God has shown me. I'm just wondering how I knew God had a wrath when I first started telling people on on Facebook that he had a wrath and uh, 
and he was just. Not even knowing he was, not even knowing he was just. How was, how did I know that? How did I know he was just and he had a wrath and I didn't even know it? Never read it before. How did, I, how did I ask God that day, why are we being judged? And he told me iniquity. And the next, and I, and I don't even know if I'd ever remember ever hearing the word of iniquity before. And it sits there and says he'll deny people of workers of iniquity. But everybody thinks that they're clear of sin. How could they be clear of sin? When iniquity has to do with sin. And my very first, my very first definition of iniquity that I ever witnessed was knowing sin. When you know you're doing something wrong, you know you're doing something wrong. That was the very first definition of what I saw, what iniquity was. Knowing sin. That you know what you're doing is sinful. And I thought everybody, I thought Christ took all the sins away at the cross. How could you be held held accountable for iniquity if if Christ took all the sins away at the cross? That's why I know people have got the wrong message out here. Unsound doctrine. That's exactly what it is. It's unsound doctrine. See, this woman that I'm staying with, she's a Baptist, just like this Baptist the other day that never heard, she had never heard where, where it was okay to sin. But it's the Baptist church that, that, that's preaching once saved, always saved. And when you preach once saved, always saved, you make people believe that they can live and do worldly things and that you're right with God and you're not right with God being worldly, doing worldly things. And that's exactly what once saved, always saved T t tends to make people believe that all they have to do is believe and have faith and 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 live a worldly life and you're going to be accounted worthy and uh, it ain't going to happen that's not how it is it's not how it works that's the unsound doctrine the traditions of men that's exactly what it is And, and and this lady that I'm staying with, she's a Baptist. And I told her when when I got to Oklahoma, I told her that God told me we could lose the that we could lose the Holy Spirit. And she even admitted it that we could lose the Holy Spirit. But the thing is, she she hasn't been indoctrinated with this new crap that people are preaching because she hadn't gone to church in a while. I mean, could you imagine being indoctrinated, indoctrinated in this crap that people are preaching today? That's exactly what's wrong. I wonder, I wonder why this one pastor that I used to, I used to be subscribed to, always talked about believing and that when you believe that you're saved and everything, and then come to find out that people have said he was a Calvinist. No wonder why I didn't like his messages. I liked his messages at first because, he, I mean, he had a good message. But whenever you preach his falsehood, that, I mean, because the only way believing is going to work is that when God is in your life is, lit, is, is, bringing, is bringing you to a repentive life. I'm telling you, there's a scripture right there in the book of Acts where with God in your life, He'll bring you to a repentive life where <laughs> and I know it to be true. I know it to be true that that yes, there's no doubt in my mind that you can believe and be saved, but the only way is if you live a repentive life. If you're not willing to live a repentive life, then you're not you're not proving yourself of being uh, a person of Christ. <laughs> you're proving it. Everybody's doing worldly things. Most Christians are. I always wondered why my friend that was a pastor always watched Will Ferrell shows. I mean, what possibly could anybody gain from watching a Will Ferrell show? And he was a pastor. I've never seen anything good from Will Ferrell shows. Oh, that's well, no, I don't even think that, that show was any good. Bewitched. I'm sure there's some kind of misleading message there from even the movie Bewitched. And everybody wants to be a part of this world and watch the worldly things. I don't know how people can declare themselves Christians. 
I know the people that I've seen that are Christians, they walk away from this lifestyle. They walk away from watching worldly TV shows and stuff like that. There's good things to watch on TV, but I can guarantee you it's very, very minimum. I've watched episode shows that they had on, on Netflix and stuff like that, and no wonder why it's on Netflix. You ought to hear the stuff that they say in the shows. To just imagine, I'm surprised it's not, I'm surprised it's not welcomed on the regular TV. But, I mean, the way people are today, I can just imagine that this stuff would be welcomed on TV today. I mean, it's already welcome in the church. Live your worldly life. You'll inherit the kingdom. <laughs> that's exactly what people are saying. I'm telling you, what, that's, that's what the heresy of once saved, always saved. It makes somebody feel like, okay, so you're telling me all I have to do is believe, and I can go out and do things of the world, and I'll be, I'll be accounted worthy? No way. That is not the way it works. That is not the way it works. You're not going to be in bed with a new person every night and say you're a Bible-believing Christian and bear the fruit of the Holy Spirit and say you're a person of God. That is, that is a falsehood. That is a lie. And that's exactly what this generation right now believes. That all they have to do is believe and live a worldly life. And they're going to inherit the kingdom. I'm sorry. Just like my niece. Just, my, just like my niece sitting here talking about how she's a Christian and, and, and has done coke as a Christian. <laughs> that ain't working. It's not working, people. No wonder why she, no wonder why I can't find her on Facebook because she didn't want to have nothing to do with the stuff that I was sitting here show, telling people back then. This world is literally gone. And people welcome it. It's a shame. It's a shame. Workers of iniquity. Living in sin is wickedness. And salvation ain't going to be granted to them. So when everything does fall apart. And I know everything falls apart before the rapture. I didn't say God's wrath. I said everything's going to fall apart. Yeah. What I what I really wonder is I wonder why God makes me a watchman. I sit here and there ain't no telling how many people that I wanted to, for them to actually hear everything that God showed me face to face because I would rather tell somebody face to face than over the worldwide internet. And what's what's a sad thing is that one of the people I sit here and I had them. I said, watch one of my videos. They watch my videos and then they unfriend me on Facebook. Unfriend me. Calls himself a watchman. And now he preaches the same thing I sit here and talked about that I made videos in 2015 about. Isn't that weird? How somebody could all of a sudden start professing all this stuff about a meteor hitting, the majority of people dying. Yeah, the majority of people will die soon. Will die soon. We'll die soon. That is exactly what will happen right there. It talks about it in the book of Zechariah. Two-thirds of the population will perish. God told me that when I was in New Mexico. So I'm wondering how everybody thinks they're, they're right with God when two-thirds of the population is going to perish without God. How did God tell me something? Another person, a, a watchman, uh, what is his name? I cannot imagine. I cannot remember his name. I remember hearing him talk. He said two thirds of the population would perish. God told me two, th two thirds of the population would perish. I, I sit here. He said one to three percent of Christians would make it. God told me three to four percent of the, the, the whole population of the world would make it. I sit here and watch people talk about how one out of a thousand people could make it. That's how bad it is.
unsound doctrine is all they're preaching today. It's exactly what it is. Don't fear. If you feared, you're going to get the wrong message. And they're not even talking about fearing God. But the whole idea is people are not fearing God. Isn't that strange? Isn't that strange that people say we shouldn't? You're not supposed to preach fear. Well, you are supposed to preach fearing God. Isn't that weird? I'm telling you, isn't it so strange? That people would sit here and say, don't fear, don't fear, don't fear. Oh yeah. Great message everybody out here preaching. Great message. Mm -mm -mm. What a shame. Literally, what a shame. Well... That's exactly what it is. When you don't fear God, you don't get that wisdom, people. Everybody thinks they're rightly dividing the Bible. And it's they got a, 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 a horrible message for rightly dividing the Word of God. It is finished having anything to do with what the, the law written out here. How can people sit here and think that, that is, it is finished has anything, absolutely has anything to do with what's going on? Christ came here. That's right. He did what he did. And then it is finished. He was talking to God, but everybody thinks that that is part of their message that, you know, no jot or tittle would be changed. Oh, but it is finished. That means it's all taken away. Really? That's a really horrible message that people got out here. It is finished. Having something to do... I mean, isn't Jesus coming back or is it finished? Isn't Jesus coming back or is it finished? And New Testament, what does it say? Uh, the law would be written on the heart and the mind. What law? I know it's not Moses' law. I know it's not. And I'm not going to ever sit here and declare the Ten Commandments being a law because there's a law, statutes, commandments, and all that stuff in the Old Testament. It talked about how 